Welcome to Module 1, Lesson 15. Let's get started. Today, we will be learning how to model the commutative property of multiplication. We are learning this so that we can multiply and divide fluently. We will use math in real life situations. We will know that we are successful when we can use an array and a tape diagram to model the commutative property. What is commutative? Do you know? Factors can change their order without changing the product. We call that the commutative property. Draw an array with two rows and four columns. It should look like this. I have one, two rows, and one, two, three, four in each row. Remember, a row goes from side to side, and the column goes up and down. Now draw an array with four rows and two columns. It should look like this. I have one, two, three, four rows, and I have one, two columns. That means I have two in each row. Write a multiplication equation for each array. Remember, the number of rows is the number that goes in the first factor place. The number of columns is the number that goes in the place of the second factor. So you should have written 2 times 4 equals 8. Now how can you get to that 8? Well, you can count by 4 twice, 4, 8, or you can add together all of the circles. So you can count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 2 times 4 equals 8. Now for the second equation, we've got 4 rows of 2 equals 8. So I can count by 2's 4 times. 2, 4, 6, 8. 4 times 2 also equals 8. Now draw a tape diagram to represent each multiplication equation. Remember that the two is the number of groups. And in a tape diagram or a bar diagram, as it's sometimes called, the number of groups is the number of boxes. So in the first equation, we've got two boxes with four in each box, two times four. For the second equation, we have four boxes with two in each box. 4 times 2. Next, we always want to label our tape diagrams. Do you know what our label should be? Let's find out. Well, for the first bar diagram or tape diagram, we have one box is 4. How many in all is eight? So my bracket on the bottom goes all the way across and I label that with eight. On my second diagram, one box is only two, but I still have eight in all. So my bottom label is an eight. Draw an array to match this expression. 
five times four or five rows of four. It should look like this. I have one, two, three, four, five rows, and I have one, two, three, four in each row. Now we can use the commutative property to write two multiplication equations to match the array. Now, naturally, the first equation you might come up with would be corresponding to five rows of four. But we know that we can switch around those two factors and still get the same product. So we could also say that four times five equals 20. Now let's draw and label a tape diagram to represent each multiplication equation. So first we have five groups of four. We should have five boxes with four in each box. Then we have four groups of five. So we should have four boxes with five in each box. Our label at the bottom of the tape diagram will be the same each time. They should both have a total of 20. But our top label at the top for each box will be different. Let's check it out. So for this one, we have five boxes with four in each box. So our label at the top must be a four. For the second equation, we have four boxes with five in each box. So our label at the top should be a five. And again, the bracket at the bottom goes all the way across. And that is labeled with the how many and all number which is the product, and we know that is 20. All right, let's put our skills to work. We're going to do a redraw white question together. You will need paper and pencil if you have it, or a dry erase board, or I'm going to show you how to use a jam board. That is an online tool that you can use if you have access to Google. So the redraw write process is RDW. R stands for read the question and pick out the important information. D stands for draw it out. We want to draw a math model of some sort. That could even include just an equation in some instances. Finally, the W stands for write the answer as a sentence. So this is where we use our writing skills to use our best words to create a juicy answer that includes words from the question, as well as the description of how we arrived at our solution. Okay, I'm going to read it aloud and I'm going to annotate it or mark it up as we go with important information. It says draw an array, okay, to represent four times eight. All right, four times eight seems important. And solve for the product. Okay, so the unknown is the product, that solution. That's the solution. And what we do know is that there are four groups of eight or four rows of eight in our array. Then use the commutative property to write a new multiplication equation and model it with a tape diagram. We can do this. Are you ready? Okay. I'm going to go to my Jamboard by opening up my web browser and typing jamboard.google.com. If you need a link to a Jamboard, I will leave it in the description box below. You can pause this at any time to get the materials that you need. Okay, I'm at jamboard.google.com. I'm pressing the plus button to open a new clear Jamboard. I'm selecting the pen tool and I can select whatever color I choose. I'm going with black. Now I want to go back to my question to make sure that I have precisely the right information. It says draw an array to represent four rows of eight and solve for the product. Okay, four rows of eight. One, two, three, four, five, Four rows of eight. One, two, 
three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I want to do that four times for four rows. Okay, so we have our array with four rows of eight. Let's go back to the question. It says solve for the product. Use the commutative property to write a new multiplication equation and model it with a tape diagram. Okay, so I have four times eight. I wanna solve for the product. But the question is requiring me to write a new multiplication equation. So using the commutative property, I can switch the two factors around and write eight times four. Okay, now I have choices. I can either multiply four times eight and get the product for both equations, or I can multiply eight times four and get the product for both equations. Or as a last resort, if you haven't multiplied memorize your multiplication table yet? And might I remind you that that should be a top priority. You could count each X in the array, but I happen to know my fours pretty good. So I'm gonna count by fours eight times. Four, eight, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28, 32. So I know that four times eight and eight times four are both 32. So I have my product. All right, so I've completed that step. I'm going to go back to the question to make sure that I've got everything I need. Okay, it says use the commutative property to write a new multiplication equation and model it with a tape diagram. Okay, so four times eight I've modeled with an array now I need to model eight times four with a tape diagram. So I need my pen tool. And I happen to know that there are 32 in all. And I happen to know that there are eight groups and that tells me that there should be eight boxes. Now I also know that the, the size of each group is four. So I can label that each group or each box has a four. So that's my labeled tape diagram. Let's go back to the question and see if there's anything else I need. No, nope, I'm ready to write my answer. So how can I answer? There's no exact question, but I can describe what I've done. I can say, I used the commutative property to show that four times eight equals eight times four. I modeled my equations with an array and a tape diagram. The product is 32. Okay, so I've used words to write a nice juicy answer showing that I know how to do it and I can explain my thought process. So if you're turning this into your teacher, 
This will give her a good idea that you've understood the assignment. That's what the word, worded sentences are for. So we can see that how you arrived at your answer there, but we can also understand your thinking by reading what you've written. All right, so now I can go back and look at the answer to see if I'm approximately correct. I wanna make sure that I have the correct answer, but as long as I've done my best to explain how I got to the answer, that's all I need. It doesn't have to be worded exactly as it is in the answer key. Answer, four times eight equals 32. Since four times eight is the same as eight times four, I can use a tape diagram to show that eight times four equals 32. Okay, I think I did that. Let's move on and now it's your turn to do a redraw right question on your own. So after I'm done speaking in the video, you can pause it on this frame, reread the question to yourself, find the important information, draw it out with a math model. Then you want to write in complete sentences a description of your solution. After you've done your very best to do it on your own, look in the box below. The answer is in the description box. So you'll want to compare what you wrote to what the answer key says. Does four times six equal six times four? Draw and label two tape diagrams to solve. Explain your answer. Okay, go do your very best and I will see you in the next video.